What is a scatter plot? Well, let's look at this uh, word right here, scatter. It's like, hey, things maybe were kind of scattered around. Well, that's effectively what a scatter plot is. We're plotting points on the XY plane, and it's kind of a, you know, they're kind of scattered about, uh, scattered about here on this XY plane. But if you notice, uh, when we're looking at this uh, plot, okay, this these points that are kind of scattered here, there appears to be some sort of trend going on, right? It appears to be like maybe the, uh, the points here are kind of going in this general direction. And this is the main idea behind scatter plots. Okay, we're looking for trends of uh, information that's being plotted. Okay, we're kind of saying, all right, uh, can we make any kind of sense of that? And the whole um, kind of objective uh, when we're dealing with scatter plots is to try to find one line, okay, that uh, represents uh, the basic trend here. Now, it's not going to be perfect. It's not, this line is not going to go through every single point because... You know, it's just impossible to have one line. Obviously, we can't draw a line that goes like this. So we're going to just try to find a line that kind of generally represents the best trend uh, that's going on here. So if we think about it for a second, we're like, well, uh, what points would we use? Would I use this point and this point? Well, no, because this line right here definitely doesn't represent what appears to be this type of trend with these uh, points, right, that are being scattered about. Uh, but, you know, maybe if we use some other points here, maybe this point and let's say this point, we get a better uh, line. It's at least closer to that representation. So what we're going to be doing here in a second is picking the best two points. And this could be somewhat subjective. Uh, in other words, uh, one student could pick uh, one set of points, another student could pick another set of points. But we're going to want to pick the best two points such that if we draw a line to the, through those exact uh, two points on this plot, this scatter plot, uh, that would you know best represent the line. That's the best fitting line, not the perfect fitting line. But we're not done yet uh, talking about um, scatter plots. So here, okay, there is a trend going on. And anytime the trend is kind of increasing this way, you want to think about like the slope of a line. Okay, so y equals mx plus b. When the slope is increasing from left, left to right, that slope is positive, okay? Well, we don't call uh, this uh, plot here having a positive slope because there's multiple little uh, plots on this particular it's a scatter plot. It's not just two points. But we're going to do is use the word correlation. So this right here has a positive correlation because the general trend is like going with a slope that is positive. So what about... This situation, what if you had a plot that was kind of like this? Okay, well, hopefully you say, well, it looks like the trend is this way and you would be correct. So that is what we call a negative uh, correlation. Okay, so that scatter plot has a negative correlation. This one here has a positive correlation. And let's suppose we were looking at just all of this in one color. Is there any correlation here? Uh, the answer will be, hmm, I don't think so. And you would be correct. There is no correlation. So when you're dealing with scatter plots, you can have a positive correlation, negative correlation, or basically no correlation at all. There's really, you know, it's just uh, all over the place. So when there is a correlation, what we're going to try to do is to match or find a best fitting line. Okay, so that's kind of the setup here. And let's go ahead and put some coordinates on this uh, example problem. So what I'd like you to do, if you kind of want to play along here, is to identify, okay, two points, such that if you drew a line uh, through those respective points, it would kind of best fit, uh, you know, this pattern here, okay? So again, the general pattern, if you look at it, you know, tends to, kind of, it's kind of going like in this uh, direction. So pick two points, okay? You don't have to actually find the equations. As a matter of fact, if you want to do it, though, put your final answer into the comment section. That would be awesome. But um, anyways, pick uh, two points that you think such that you drew, if you drew a line uh, through those two points would best represent the trend here, okay? The plot. All right, so let's go ahead and answer um, this question, okay, by the points that I'm going to actually select. And again, this could be somewhat subjective. So I'm going to choose to use 3, uh, 7, that coordinate, this point here, and this point down here, negative uh, 5, negative 3. Of course, this, these are just kind of um, rough estimates on this little, I kind of freehand this here. It's not graph paper. 
Uh, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but let's say you use this point and this point. Okay, that's not too bad, okay, uh, because our line would kind of go through there, all right? So let's look at some other options here. Um, if you said, well, I use this point and this point, well, that's pretty good too, but we kind of want to get into the center of the trend here when it comes to best fitting lines in scatter plots. So here we have, if we connect this point and this point, can okay, we find a line this way? If you look, we have like three points over here, and then we have like three or four points over here, okay? Now, just uh, out of curiosity, what would we call a point uh, like this? Let's say I had a point way over here, and this was on our plot, and let's say you were like concerned about that point. You're like, well, you know, this trend here doesn't include this point. Well, this point right here, we would just uh, identify or label as an outlier, okay? So if you ever heard that, a term, an outlier, well, that's what it means. It's out, it's lying way over here. So we'll just kind of disregard it because the bulk of the data that we want to kind of uh, represent with a line is right here. So we're going to use this point and this point. Now the objective here, and this is where I'm going to be kind of testing your current algebra skills, is to find the equation of the line. I use this abbreviation FEL i.e. the find the equation of the line, that's a y equals mx plus b line. We will always kind of like to write our lines in slope-intercept form. So we want to find the equation of the line in uh, slope-intercept form. And the information that we're given is that this line passes through negative 5, negative 3, and uh, positive 3, 7. So can you find the equation of the line uh, that passes through these two, uh, two points? If you cannot, well, then you um, really need to figure this out because this is a huge part of algebra. So a couple of recommendations. Um, I'm not going to be able to thoroughly teach. I'm going to go over this, but you definitely need to do more uh, beyond this video. Okay, I have other videos on my YouTube channel. Any one of my algebra courses like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, I go over this super thoroughly, even in my pre-algebra course as well. So you can find that in the link, uh, links in the description. Um, I also have algebra notes that I kind of reference some of these steps in there as well. But let's go ahead and now find the equation of a line that goes to these two points. And that would be what we would classify as the best fitting line. Okay, so the best fitting line is a term that goes along with scatter plots. Okay, so let's get to it. Again, I'm going to use these two points here. Negative 5, negative 5, negative 3, and positive 3, 7. Okay, those are the two order pairs. The two coordinates that I'm going to be using, so let's go ahead and pick it up right here. All right, so now we want to find the equation of the line that passes through this point and this point. So when we find the equation of a line, okay, to find the equation of a line in algebra, and what we're looking for, again, is this y equals mx plus b form. Okay, this is such a great little form to write lines or linear equations in. So we're looking for uh, this form of a line that passes through these two points. So to answer that question, okay, to find the equation of a line, you need two pieces of information, okay? You will need the slope uh, of that line, and you need one point, at least one point that's on that line. Well, right now, currently, uh, we don't have the slope, we don't know that, but we have two points that are on the line, okay? So we need at least one, we happen to have two, but we don't have the slope. So what we're gonna have to do is to use our two points to calculate the slope. So you can always calculate the slope, the slope if you are given uh, two order pairs. So this is what we want to do first. So go ahead and see how well you are with these other um, uh, very important algebra skills. Can you calculate the slope between these two points? If you can't, uh, it seems to me that you need to kind of brush up uh, and get up to speed on linear equations and algebra. If you don't know this stuff, it's going to be really difficult to pass your algebra course, okay? So just make note of what you know and don't know and uh, review what you need to review. All right, so let's go ahead and find the slope between these two points. And again, I have tons of videos on all this stuff if you need to uh, look at it uh, more thoroughly. But here, we're, I'm going to go ahead and... When I teach finding a slope, I like to underline one point. Now, the slope of a line is the rise over the run, if you recall. Okay, hopefully you remember that. But the rise is the changes in the y coordinates. These are the y's. Remember, we're talking about x, y points here. So these are the y's, and the run is the differences 
of the x coordinates. These are the x coordinates right there. Okay, these are the y's. So hopefully this makes sense to you. So let's go ahead and find the slope. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I, when I find the slope, I like to underline a point to uh, prevent making a mistake. You need to watch some of my videos on slope or check out my full algebra course because a ton of students make a ton of mistakes. They're really, um, uh, you know, it's a common error in algebra to uh, calculate the slope incorrectly. You have to be very, very uh, careful on the order. Okay, so here I'm going to take the differences of the y's. I can either go negative 3 minus 7 or 7 minus uh, a negative 3. Okay, I'm going to go negative 3 here minus this 7. Okay, remember you find the differences. Now, because I started with this negative 3 right there, when I go to find the differences that x is, my first x, okay, remember my first y here, it was negative 3. It came from this ordered pair. So my first x has to come from this ordered pair right here. So that's negative 5 minus this 3 right there, okay? And what students do is they mess up these orders. Or they don't think that order makes a difference and they get the wrong slope. Believe me when I'm telling you, I've been teaching this stuff for decades. I probably graded over 10 million quizzes, tests, homework, well, maybe not that much, but you get the idea. So I see all the mistakes, so don't make these mistakes, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. So we have negative 3 minus 7, that gives us negative 10. Minus 5 minus 3 is negative 8, and a negative over negative is positive. I reduce that fraction. I get 5 over 4, so my slope is 5 over 4. Okay, so a lot going on in this problem, but if you were able to do this, well, let me go ahead and give you a nice little... Lovely happy face for being an excellent math student, but we are not done yet, okay? So let's go ahead and continue the process here. So again, we need to still find the equation of a line that passes through these two points. And to find the equation of a line, we needed uh, the slope and at least one point. So now we have the slope. The slope is five over four, so that's good. And we need at least one point, it's on the line. We have two points here that are on the line. So uh, it's really up to you on which point you want to use. Try to use the points. Uh, try to select the uh, ordered pair that is a little bit easier. You know, here it's kind of a toss-up, but I'm going to go ahead and use 3, 7. Okay, again, I could use this point as well with this slope. I'll get the same answer. But I'm going to use uh, 3, 7 and 5 over 4. Of course, that's our slope uh, to find the equation of the line. Now, you have additional options. Once you have a point and the slope, you can use either the slope-intercept formula, y equals mx plus b, to find the equation of the line or the point-slope formula. I really, really love this formula. I'm going to suggest that you always use the point-slope formula uh, for most problems when uh, you are trying to find the equation of a line. So if you think you can use this, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do, the, do this. I think that's the best use of watching this video. But let's go ahead now and use the point-slope formula with this information to find the equation of the line. All right, so here we go. Okay, so here is our point slope formula. Again, these are all dedicated videos, dedicated lessons in my, all my algebra courses. So if you're not understanding stuff, you need to do more review beyond this uh, video. All right, so we're gonna be plugging in for this Y right here. This is our Y coordinate. So we're gonna replace this with this. M is our slope. Okay, so we'll replace the M with uh, five over four. And then this x, this is our x right there. Remember, we're talking about x, y ordered pair, okay? So let's go ahead and plug in the respective values for y. We plug in 7. For the m, we're going to plug in the slope, 5 over 4. And then this for, for uh, this x here, we'll plug in 3. All right, so at this point, it's just a matter of doing algebra, which, of course, I know you're totally up to speed on. We're just going to head, uh, go ahead and solve for y or clean this up. So the first thing we want to do is the distributor property. So 5 fourths times x is 5 fourths x. And then 5 fourths times 3 is going to be what? That's going to be uh, 15 over 4. All right, hopefully you know how to multiply fractions. If you don't know how to deal with fractions, again, I have tons of stuff on this on all my channels. But make notes of what you're, not, you're kind of a little bit shaky on. That's why you have to do these problems on your own. Watching me do it isn't going to be good enough. It'd be like, okay, I know this, I don't know that. All right, so now we have y minus 7 equal to 5 over 4x minus 15 over 4. So what do we want to do? We want to solve for y. So I need to add 7 to both sides of the equation. So that's going to be y equals 5 fourths x minus 15 fourths plus 7. So now I have a lovely opportunity 
to add some fractions. Okay, again, a skill that uh, you're going to know how to deal with, but let's go ahead and show you that right now. Okay, so I need to figure out uh, negative 15 fourths plus 7 or 7 over 1. Uh, I can write 7 over 1. I need to get the same denominator, so I can multiply this by 4, this by 4. There's other. There's another easier way to do this called the Bowtie Method. Uh, that particular, I have uh, one of my videos on my YouTube channel has I, all my fraction videos, I think have two, three million views. So there's a lot of people that struggle in fractions. So if you need to review, review. All right, so I can write seven over one or uh, seven as 28 fourths. So now I get the same denominator. So I have negative 15 plus 28, a negative 15 fourths plus 28 over four is going to be 13 over four. So now I went ahead and I simplified it by adding these two fractions. I have 13 over 4. Here's my slope. So y is equal to 5 fourths x plus 13 fourths. What did we just do? Well, we just found the equation of line that went through those two coordinates. But this is the best fitting line. Not the perfect fitting line, just the best fitting line. So let's go ahead and wrap it up by looking at our uh, scatter plot. And I kind of took out these other coordinates here. So we use this coordinate and this coordinate. This We use 3, 7, negative 5, negative 3. And, you know, when we drew a line through it, we thought that it, you know, at least for me, you know, it uh, represented the trend, the scatter that's going on here in the best way. OK, it's not going to be perfect. Again, it's going to be the best. And so this is the linear equation okay, of this best fitting line. So this is uh, effectively it. OK, scatter plots and best fitting lines, you absolutely need to know how to deal with this and uh, additional stuff in algebra. But you can see here, we, we used quite a bit of different skill sets. Um, you know, how to find the slope, how to use the uh, point slope formula, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, um, algebra is, you know, a continuum, right? It's connected, one skill. There is no such thing as something that you kind of just can disregard. So if you're having trouble with anything, the smartest thing you can do is to identify uh, what you uh, need help in and then go back and relearn that. Okay. And that's where I can help you out. So again, if you need additional help on any of these topics, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel, teach this uh, super thoroughly in all my algebra courses. And I do offer algebra notes as well. You can find links to all that stuff in the description of this video. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.